Hey guys and welcome to the A lesson in the series where we will be looking at exception handling. So what is exception handling? Well basically an exception is an object that is raised or thrown under certain some circumstances um, within your program. So um, basically we use exception handling for locating errors. We have um, seen some ex um, exception uh, being thrown before. We haven't handled any bef um, as yet. But for example, when we saw that value error where our code expect an uh, integer and we entered a string, uh, that would be an exception. So in Python or in, well, most programming language, if you don't handle that exception, then your program basically crash. So for ex a quick example would be starting your variable with a number. And if we do that, and we should run this, then you see we get a syntax error. So that's basically an exception that was thrown. We can, however, handle this um, these type of exception so our program basically don't crash because for example if we should have say a print statement after this and I say uh, run this and we should run this code again you see that it doesn't even reach uh, this section here because the program crashed from right here so Exception handling would make it possible so even if this, there's an error here, we c our code can still run after that. So we'll go into some examples so you can get a better look at what exception handling is. Okay, so the basic syntax for exception handling is that first we try our code. So it's like we're saying, hey, Python, try this and we put in our suite as usual and after our suite we have an except and whatever exception we're trying to catch so a general one would just be exception so we say except exception and then whatever we want to run say our second suite and then after that we have our else statement and our third suite or whichever suite we're at. So uh, right here, Python would go ahead and it will run this, okay? If there is an exception thrown, then, and it matches the exception we're trying to capture, then it would go ahead and run the suite within that except block. Um, if you try this and there is no exception, then we'll go to our else block and there is also another uh, part of this and it's our finally now with our finally whatever is in our finally would always run so whether there's an exception whether there's an else or finally would always run so most time this is used like with file handling so we try something with our file throw an exception or whether it shows an exception or not we would want to close that file right so that's some of the uses of the exception handling so we'll go into an actual example so you can um, see how this can actually um, make your program run better because exception handling is really important especially when you start um, building big are big programs or GUI programs you're gonna need s um, some exception handling so let's say we have a program that that takes the age of a user and based on the age it allows that person access to certain information so we'll go ahead and we'll run do a while well yeah we'll do okay let's say run equal true okay so that way we can end the program when we want so we'll say while run 
So while run is true, basically, we're going to try something. We're going to try and we're going to get the age from the user. So we're going to get the age, but we want the age to be an integer. So that's important. So we're going to wrap everything in an int. Okay. So int and we get the input and we tell the user to enter your age. Okay. After that, we want to say, okay, how am I getting this here? Oh, after that, we want to say, if age is greater or equal to 18, then we will print you are allowed access to this content okay uh, else will print uh, oh. all right we can print please try again when you are at least 18 years old okay so now we got some control over this but in the case that someone enters something other than an integer like for example they're entering their age but they enter it as a string so for example instead of putting 18 for their age like 18 they actually spell out 18 so we would want to throw a if they do that python would actually throw what you call a value error right so what we're going to do is actually handle that value error so we'll say print and tell the user to please enter a please enter an age using digits okay and then we would say if if we um if remember if we if the try statement runs and there is no error then our else statement would would run after so we can just set run to equal false okay so once run equal false then uh, once run equal false then this program should stop running so it won't keep looping all right so let's see if this actually works so it asked me to enter my age and i will say 17 and it says please try again when you are at least 18 years old okay so and you see that our program ends all right let's try running this again enter your age and i'll put 20 and it says you are allowed access to this content so you see that it does work but in the case that we enter a um a value other than a number like say for example we say 18 and we run you see that it goes to the exception block so it says please enter an age using digits and the program continues to run because run is still true so it goes here it handles the exception then our program runs again and if we go ahead now and we put in 18 then you are allowed access so that's a case where exception handling would be critical because um, again if it was not for this uh, exception handling here then your program would crash and you don't want your program to crash while a user is using it because that will just be bad experience all right so let's go into another use of exception handling where we can basically with this example that i'm going to show you we can basically go through a string 
find find a well we're gonna find uh the first word that are that is enclosed with uh the angle brackets right so say for example like if you code in xml or html then you know that we have those those brackets that for we use for say styling or not even styling for tags so what i'm going to do is i'm going to find the first tag and there's there should be something between that tag and then we will put that close tag at the end all right so i'll show you how we will do something like that all right so say we have um text let's just leave this empty for now and we have result All right. So for this first example, I'm going to use the the conventional way that would do this like using a lot of if statement and then I'm going to show you the same thing using the the exception handling and you will see how how organized your code would look when you use exception handling instead of the conventional method. All right? So for I will say <coughs> text dot find. Alright, and we're gonna find we're gonna find the first angle bracket. Alright. And we're gonna say if I is greater than negative one. So if I is um if I basically exists in the string so no e negative one would be all the way to the end of the file so it's just saying if a file is within if the i is within that string so whether if we find this then whether it is in the text string all right so we say if that then we'll look for j so we'll make J be the last angle bracket for that said um, word, all right? So text dot find. And we'll start, as you see, we can start looking after the, the I. So it would be I <coughs> plus one, sorry. And then we'll say if J again is within that text, that text um, <coughs> object, then the result would be the text. So we'll get back the text. Then we'll add I. So we'll add back that first angle bracket. And then we will add the the backslash and then we would add the rest of I so I one. up to j plus one so basically we're going to use splicing to get the rest of the the rest of the string so whatever we whatever um wherever we found the last angle bracket which we assigned to j will basically go from the i where we found the first one 
plus one because we're splicing and remember that um, we want to we won't want to include I because we already have it here so we go one step ahead and then we go to J and remember that the reason why we can't just leave J here is because this goes to the up to but not including the the index here so we have to go plus one right and then we could always print the result after so let's print result all right and for example let's say we're in html and we know that in some advanced text editor we can actually have our our tag close for us automatically so let's see if that works here and we see that it says strong you have bold statement and it actually close our tag for us so this is something that some of these advanced text editor would use to actually help you in closing your your tags all right so this is basically the conventional method of uh, handling stuff like this but say for example we want to use exception handling then what we could do is practically the same thing so we have our text string let's blank again and then we say try i equal text find and we can basically copy this because it's the same thing whoa what happened okay so all right then we'll copy this and what else we'll copy this all right and after that now we'll have our accept and this should throw a value error if something is wrong and if something did go wrong we'll just return an empty result all right so let's print the result and we'll take this copy and we'll delete all of this but just before we delete i can show you that this takes the same amount of lines as the first one so this is basically one two three four five six and this is one two three four five six so the same amount of lines and it should do the same thing see the only thing with this is that it's more efficient because as you see we, we're not checking uh, for stuff every time we run a new line we actually run through the program completely and only if there is some type of error then we go to the exception handling so this is more efficient and remember that your code can be way bigger than this so you can see how much processing time you would save doing so All right so we're gonna just show one more example of how you can actually use something called an assertion error right so say for example you want the user to enter a name so name and we'll use the input function and say enter your name so first we're gonna try and we're gonna check that the person actually entered a name so we're gonna check that only letters and hyphen are in this name so if it contains number then we're gonna throw an arrow and if it contains something else we're gonna also throw an arrow so it should only contain letters and hyphens 
So let's check this out. So we're going to check every letter in that name. All right. So we're going to say for X in name, we're going to assert. So basically, we're going to say this should be true, right? So we're going to say X is alpha, right? So that basically check that the, 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 the letter or the character that it's at is actually a uh, alphabet right and we're gonna say or x equal a hyphen right so that's what we are assert so if this is not the case then python would throw an assertion error so an assertion error can still crash the program so we're gonna capture that assertion error so we're gonna say accept assertion error and we're gonna say we're gonna tell the user what to do so we're gonna say um, your name should only contain letters and hyphens All right and for the finally so we're going to use a finally block now. We're going to say print. Let's say thank you or thank you for using this program. So what I want to show you is that no matter what happens, then the finally block will always come through. Right. So let's go ahead and run this. And if I enter my name, you will see that it went through OK. Thank you for using this program. And if I should put a hyphen in my name also, it should still work. Let's see. There you go. Still work. But say, for example, someone chooses to put some number in their name and we go ahead and run this and it says your name should only contain letters and hyphen so it did go ahead and run that uh, assertion error so but it did not crash our program so that's the good thing about exception handling so there are a lot of exception handlers out there you can basically go to the the python site and type in exception Python exception and you, you should go see a page where it goes through a lot of them so you can try them out see which one throws which arrows and so forth so I hope you learn a lot from this lesson and I'll see you in our other lesson where we'll be looking at classes in Python so thanks again for watching guys and bye